Okay. Hello there. Welcome to the only show that brings you happenings from the diplomatic community in Ghana and around the world. This is your go-to place for all the activities happening in the diplomatic community. My name is Harriet Nadi and the show is Diplomatic Affairs, which airs every Saturday on Pan-African Television. Right, today is going to be another interesting edition of Diplomatic Affairs. I'm super excited because the narrative, we are taking a different twist on diplomatic affairs but it, it's all under diplomacy it's all about um, international relations people countries dealing with other countries and of course people individuals who are spearheading very positive message and getting the world to hear their voices and act and of course cause the change that they need so i am super excited about this hardly do we talk about these things we'll talk about fashion we'll talk about self-esteem we'll talk about confidence we'll talk about channeling your energy into something positive and making an impact at the end of the day so i am so excited about today's engagement on the show and i need you to make time tell your friends to join us and let's have a very interesting conversation. I will be back right after this break. Please stay. Welcome back to the show. My name is Harriet Nate. I'm seated here with a very big personality. He's too big to be contained in my space. And so I'm here to share him with the rest of the world. Um, he's so fine. He's got swag. He's got a good attitude. I love that. And most importantly, he has a message, a message for the world. And I want all of us to pay attention and hear this message. We are not selfish. We always want to share with you. And so today we'll be talking about the black men's wear flash mob. Yes, wondering what that is? Well, that's why we are here to talk about it. It's going to be very interesting. My guest is Niandri Broussard, and he is the founder of the Black Men's Wear Flash Mob. And he is here in the country, you know, to connect with the people of Ghana and, of course, to also lend a helping hand in building together a better country, a better region, a better continent, and, of course, a better world. So we are here to have a very nice conversation. Yandri, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you. How are you? Thank you. I'm well. I'm ah, well. you I'm... look so... What is the word I'm looking for? Too dapper for my life. Uh, no, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm glad to be here. I appreciate you allowing me to speak on your platform. I, I'm coming to the end of my trip to Ghana, and the words really can't come together just how this right. experience has been. But uh, I'm just glad to be here, and thank you for the time with you today. You're welcome. We are very honored to have you, most importantly because you have a message for the world. So I want everybody to pay, to pay attention. Now, how long have you been in Ghana? Is this your first time in Ghana? Though? This is my first time in Ghana. This is my first time in Africa. Ooh. So the first time that I come to the motherland, of yes. course I have to go to Ghana. It uh, is the yes. gateway to Africa. It's the gateway. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So this is our first time here. Uh, we came, we've been here for about 10 days between Accra and Kumasi mm -hmm. uh, doing various works. But uh, I'm, again, I, the country is rich in culture, rich in history, so welcoming. Uh, we've, my, my team and I traveled here and we've had a tremendous time and we mm -hmm. felt welcome. We felt like we've been at home this, this entire home. time. Yes. This is home. Yes. This yes. is home. Now, you have a message. Now, before we come to the message, I'd like us to talk about what brought you to Ghana. So a couple of different things brought us to Ghana. So we, as we've been on this, uh, this flash mob tour uh, over the last five years and really catapulted it over the last two or three years to really make it a tour international so that way we can really tap into different people in different places around the world. When we were discussing going to Africa, my photographer Jermaine Gibbs actually has a mission here called Hope Missions. Okay. Um, we've partnered with Hope Missions to do to uh, uh, add a well to a village outside of Kumasi to build a school in the village outside of Kumasi because there were needs, and to be able to address those needs in a way to where when we said, okay, well, when we're going to Ghana, of course we have to go there mm -hmm. because we want to be able to visit the communities that we're supporting and that we're uplifting and helping. So. There was a very short list of the first places that we would go in Africa, and then Ghana clearly was at the very top of that list. Right. So, 
flash black men's wear flash mob yes ma'am what is it about the the black men's wear flash mob series it's it's a traveling opportunity for us to bring black men together around the world right not just in the united states not just in europe not just in africa but around the world how can we connect the dots of the diaspora in a way that uplifts black men uh, fortunately where we are in the united states and i'm sure it's probably everywhere the media likes utilizes a negative voice when they speak about black men mm. so in essence what happened for me is when i was when i would see the news and i would see the news stories about my community i mean they were all negative and when you when you when you consistently take a negativity what's going to happen the likelihood that you become a negative person is very high because you've been geared to think that okay this is my outcome this is how it's supposed to go and so for the black menswear approach it was a way for us to put out positive content to combat all the negative stereotypes and the bigger picture about it is it's, it's not to combat the stereotypes externally it's really to combat the stereotypes internally for the those that are young and that that uh they're going to see those and that's going to turn them into who they are. So how can I put out, how can we as a team put out so much positive energy, positive representation of you as a black boy to where you know that the steps of you becoming a great black man, they're there. And so just ways for us to change our mindset internally is really the, the, the idea around the platform. So the flash mob is what we've been able to do to where we can travel. We bring in hundreds of guys together in every city that we go to, to where we've really built an ecosystem of thousands of black men that are entrepreneurs, that are doctors, that are educators, that are mentors, that have nonprofits, that are philanthropists, that are blue collar, that are white collar, creating a safe space for all of us to rise together. And how do we uh, share ideas? How do we share economics? Mm -hmm. How can we do a lot as a unit? Because if we're strong as a unit, our communities around us are going to be supported. Our black women are going to feel protected. Uh, our black youth are going to feel motivated and inspired. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the Flash Mob series come into play to really bring all of that globally full circle. All right. Now I get it. Um, I have an idea of what you want, what you're doing with the flash mob yes. and um, black men's wear flash mob. Um, let's talk about you grew up in the United States of yes. America. Um, which city? Uh, I grew up in Houston. Uh, Houston. I now live in Dallas, but for the most part, I spend most of my time in Texas. You talked about some of the challenges that black men are faced with yes. in their communities. How was growing up for you like? So, you know, honestly, growing up for me was a little bit different. So my dad actually was in the military. Okay. So until I was about 10 years old, we traveled a lot as a child. So we spent some time overseas, we spent some time on the West Coast, mm -hmm. we spent some time in Texas. And so for me as a child, early on, I got to see different dynamics because you know, I might be here for a year and I go to a brand new place. I mean, they're you're all, you're always on the move. Always on the move. And so me always be on the move. I was very well intentioned in every place that I went to to get to know people, to understand how people thought about me. Like th those first moments uh, where, you know, the first impressions are lasting. Those first impressions for me, I gathered a lot of first impressions because I moved so often. And so experiencing that, you know, going to this place, how I was received, even as a child, and going to this place, how I was received, it's like, okay, well, what's wrong here? Like, I haven't done anything wrong to anybody, but there's just this, um, you do something wrong and you're automatically typecasted, right? Versus where everyone else has opportunities to, to mess up. Everyone else has opportunities to have a bad day. But there was things that I noticed. It's like, well, okay, that's a little different. And, and you know, having those conversations with my parents and them understanding, well, you know, this is how the world works. You know, you... you you understand it, don't let it slow down your progress, but just know in the back of your mind there are barriers that you have to go through just because of what you look like. And being able to see that from Asia to the United States and understanding that at a young age, I think it's really kind of propelled and moves us forward in this mission because at a young age I understood that. Fast forward into high school, right? High school, the friends that you keep tend to put you in different situations. Um, Having potential, having run-ins with with police that should have been easy run-ins, but were prolonged, and and you know, hearing things like you fit a description, and hearing things as though we're looking for boys like you, like what, what do you mean boys like me? Young men that are that are you know doing well in their communities and just trying to make it from stage to stage, and just hearing that at a young age is, again, it starts to make you think differently about well, okay, well the next time I have that 
that uh, that run in with them is because oh they're looking for somebody like me okay well i'm probably going to get you know maybe taken down to the station just because they're always looking for somebody like us and and experiencing that in a place that's supposed to be the land of the free the home of the brave but you don't feel free you feel as though you have to you have to adhere to certain to additional rules that everyone else has, doesn't have to adhere to and so you know learning that at a young age now being an adult going through college university you know in the states and having experiences in university uh, to where going to a predominantly white university and conversations that that as a as a young grown-up that you're hearing about oh okay well that's the black group over there or, oh, okay well you know well, we're not going to do business with that group or you guys can't come to our venue you can't come to the party that we're having you can't come to this social event because you don't fit who we're looking for for these events like all of these things compounding just make you take a look back and say all right well if nobody wants us who's going to be the voice to show that we that we matter right and so using our platform to grow into that just based off of my life experiences had really kind of catapulted what we're trying to do with Black Men's Word to provide this home, this safe, this safety net, this safe space, even if it's just for ideas and networking and encouragement, we know how we are as a community. We're going to encourage the mess out of each other, right? If I see you have something going on, oh man, how can I support? How can I tell people about it? How can I amplify your mission? That's warm. That's warming for us as individuals. So being able to, to leverage that and utilize that uh, as a platform just based on experiences and now providing that safe space through black men's wear is one of the biggest goals that we have. Now, the United States of America is um, one of the leading advocates when it comes to um, peace and security and, you know, creating a safe haven for um, people of all colors who come into um, one community accepting each other and so this message is frequently, yeah. you know, um, is frequently portrayed by the United States yeah. of America. And we expect the U.S., of course, to do better. Sometimes when we see some of these stories, police brutalities, discrimination, stereotyping, um, the tagging, the labeling, yeah. you know, and all of that. Um, it's, it's very interesting that we still have this. It, it, oh yeah. This day and age, yeah. we still have yep. the twenty-first century. We still have this to deal with. Yeah. People of color still have this to deal with. Yes. And that's a serious issue. Yes. I am excited that as a young man, you have identified this as a huge challenge. You know, in the black community, and you want to change the narrative. How can we get beyond what you're doing? How can the world change? contribute to changing the narrative? I think one of the big things, going to the beginning part of your question around the United States, you know, I, I love, I love, you know, where I live. I love being a part of the United States because there are a lot of opportunities and accesses that, that, that I have being there. And to be honest, like, my family's been in the U.S. for a long time, like generations on generations. I can track back seven direct generations to Louisiana and Texas, you know, from my family. And so, being there and developing and growing up there, you know, those, those type of things. But to your point of how are we still here is because a lot of it is the legislation, the, the laws that are in Policy place. Policy makers have to do better. Policy makers, yes. Yeah, and, and, and there's a, you know, politics are politics everywhere, right? It's a game to be played. It's a power shift and it's a power struggle. But then it becomes how do, how do, the people that are a part of that dynamic really get taken care of. And I think that's a place that we're at to where, you know, a lot more people are pushing back. When you think about, right, civil rights in the U.S. was in the 1960s. Right. My, my parents were born in this time, or were, were young children in this time, and so we're not that far removed from just being able to have the right to vote, mm. to be able to have the right to sit in the same restaurants as people that don't look mm -hmm. like you, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we think about how far we've come, a little ways, when we think about how, f how much further we have to come, it's still a long time until we see equality. Now I say, how can the world can, can, can uh, uh, attribute to that, right? How can the world globally, I think what we have to do is you, you really have to consider where your dollars are going, right? Because where you fund things, the campaigns that you, that you fund, and the campaigns that you support, 
those individuals are in enacting legislation or they're not changing policy that affect everyone. And we've got to get out of this space to where, you know, again, this balance, this balance of power, if everyone lived freely, everyone can explore freely, and everyone has the opportunities to advance themselves as everyone else, what's wrong with that? Like, why is that bad? And you, 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 you see and you sense whether it is in you know, France, uh, 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 Europe, whether it is in the United States, whether it is in Africa, whether it is in Asia or Australia, there are different barriers that have to be removed so everyone has the same opportunity to succeed. They, they say in America, you know, you know it's, it's, it, it is the, the, the land of opportunity. But when you have to work twice as hard to receive those opportunities, when you have to be twice as smart, this is something that we're taught at a young age, you have to be twice as smart, mm -hmm. twice as fast, mm -hmm. and, and, and be twice as good. The pressure of that in itself for a child is overwhelming. Like, oh gosh, I gotta, I gotta really do this well because I don't wanna let anyone else down and just add the added pressure. Children shouldn't have to have that pressure, right? So how can we reframe this entire system to really understand that it's not about black or white and it's right. not about your, you know, you, you, what you look like, but it's what's on the inside and how can we leverage that globally to where everyone has those same opportunities, I think is, is gonna be what moves us forward. Right. You're still watching Diplomatic Affairs. We're still talking about the flash, um, the black men's wear, flash mobs. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And um, we are talking about how we can uh, collect a positive energy. Black men can come together into one space, create a safety net for them to actually thrive and bring out their best in contributing to um, a better world, the better world that we all want to see. And of course, my guest is Neandra Broussard and um, the founder of the Black Men's Wear Flash Mob. I will be back right after this break. Please stay. Right, welcome back. The show is Diplomatic Affairs with me, Harriet Nati. My guest is Neandra Broussard, the founder of Black Men's Wear Flash Mob. And um, he's in Ghana here to um, get the Ghanaian community to um, share his message with the Ghanaian community and of course um, create a space that can bring men together for them to um, bring out their best in contributing to the world that we all aspire to have. And Neandra, you talked about, before we went on break, you talked about it's not about black and white, it's not about what you look like, it's not about what you stand for as a person, your differences, mm -hmm. um, but why the name Black Men's Wear? Yeah, it's, it's, it was meant to be a direct attention draw, right? You immediately say, okay, Black Men's Wear, hmm, like what, what, is, what is that about, right? So it, it, when you think about a name, it's all in a name. And so if I can spark an interest, okay, is it clothes? Is it black men? Is it like, what is it? And that's allowed us to really in, it open up more conversations because you gotta have a way from a marketing perspective. So I have a marketing background. You have to have a way to engage an audience immediately. Mm -hmm. And that idea around black menswear, one, you know, it, it's definitely meant to catch our community because like, okay, black menswear, okay, what's that? What's, what's this black right. going on it's here? Like, how can I? The minute I had, Black men's wear. Yes. I'm thinking it's strictly black men. Yes. If you're white, you can't join this movement. Is that what it is? So it's, it's everybody has allies, mm -hmm. right? Um, the flash mob aspect of black men's wear, the flash mob is purely brothers, black. Yeah, right. purely black men. Now, when we think about what we do and who we partner with from a black men's wear perspective outside the flash mobs, whether that's on our podcast, whether that's on our YouTube channel, right. typically the guests that we have uh, are black men, but we have a lot of non-black individuals that support the programs um, that, that we create content with and brand partnerships to create content on their behalf that speak to our community. Mm -hmm. And so being able to leverage our voice, our community, our network, so that way, again, like, we love telling the true story of black men. Right. So even if we have a brand partnership that we work with, they come to us and say, hey, well, this is what we want to do. We say, well, I, see, I understand your product, but your product is nice, but the focus for us is not going to be the right, product. Right. It's going to be what's the story of the doctor who's a surgeon mm -hmm. who, as a surgeon, you know, people rely on him with this sharp mm -hmm. razor in his hand. Mm -hmm. What does he shave with every day? He shaves with this product. So the product is there, mm -hmm. but our goal 
is to tell that story of that black doctor. That story is far more intriguing and motivating than, oh, there's a razor here, right? There's a shaving product here. And so leveraging that, that a lot of that comes from non-black organizations and companies that allow us. And then for us, we do that partnership. We receive those funds. We're now putting that back into a project that we're doing to directly impact the community. And so leveraging both sides of that, from the flash mob perspective, you got to you got to be a black man to to participate. Now you can come and see it. All all is fun. All is well. But this is specifically to motivate us because we don't have a lot of motivation out there. How can we use so our platform it's to do that? Geared towards a certain constituency. Yes, ma'am. Understood. Now let's talk about um, the flash mob. Um, you started in the United States yes. of America. Yes. Where exactly? Dallas, State? Texas. Dallas. Yes. Texas. Yes. Um, I've never been to Dallas before. <laughs> we have to get you out there. Yeah, we have to get you out there. <laughs> right. So, the first one. How did it happen? So, honestly, the first one we ever did, the it was edition. on. It was it was twenty five guys at eight o'clock in the morning. In October of two thousand and seventeen. It was last minute, and I had done a I had done a small photo shoot with a couple of guys that I that I known, because um, <clears throat> we had already started the Black Men's Wear platform. Had the platform to really just show Black men in a positive light. We did our own photo shoot with four guys. When we saw that content, I was like, "Oh, this is this is something that has to go larger." And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at it. And it might sound cliche, but God's voice told me, "Go bigger." Right? You see this? You see this imagery? Because even four guys. Mm-hmm. The feedback we were getting, like, whoa, like, where did y'all, how did I get together? Who are these Marine, brothers? Marine. What are they? Yes. And so it's like, okay, well, let's do another one. Go bigger. So that went from four mm-hmm. to 25. All right. We went from 25 to 50, and 75 to 100, and bigger and, better. and, bigger, and so bigger. from Dallas, Texas to where? Which to. Because it looks like this is not just a movement in the United States of America. Correct. It's a global movement. Correct. So which other countries? So other countries we've done, so this is our fourth country outside of, or excuse me, this is our third country with one more outside of the U.S. So we've done London already. Mm -hmm. Um, We've done Paris, France. We've done Accra, Ghana. Mm -hmm. We have Toronto, Canada coming up. That's our next one is in Toronto, Canada. So Accra, Ghana is like the first one on the African continent. Absolutely. You started with Accra, Ghana. Yes, yes. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Yes. So where next? Uh, Toronto, Canada. So, Toronto. So which, how many countries so far? So it's so far four countries as of today. Okay. There'll be five in September. Oh. Uh, but even within the United States, mm-hmm. you know, Los Angeles, Miami, New York City, Chicago, Atlanta, Houston, Dallas, um, uh, Charlotte, uh, Detroit. Right. It, we, I mean, Please we're all Victoria, over. All the yes. I, yes. I hope you are able to make it to to cover all the fifty four states. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> because they need to really hear this yes, message. And yes. I think this is good. What do you hope to achieve at the end of the day? So honestly, we're, we're now shifting ourselves to be more known as a media platform mm. specific to black men. And so, again, when we speak about, you know, in the United States, you have platforms like, you know, really great platforms like Essence, uh, like Blavity, that speak to and empower the black female. Um, Ebony magazine, BET, Jet, BET, BET has a yes, station, BET exactly. Her. They have a, an entire network yeah. built for and supporting black women. We want to be that voice for black men. And so as we amplify and build this thing up, this is, which is how we've branched off into podcasts, how we've branched off into YouTube channels, how we've branched off into an influencer network mm-hmm. that allows us to be able to help to bridge the gap between what they pay white influencers on social media to do projects with them and what they pay black influencers and really saying like no there's an opportunity here for black influencers to earn a lot of money from an economic perspective but they don't understand what they're missing out on when they undersell themselves or they undervalue themselves right so le- leaning into that we have a full media we have a full production house hmm. in, in staff we came here with our photographer with our videographer with our production assistants we all travel together and so our thing is as we continue to build out this content that's speaking to us as black men We want to be known as the premier source. If anyone wants to create a story or content around black men, Mm -hmm. they're going to come and talk to black menswear. Awesome. So how sustainable is this movement? I think the movement is extremely sustainable because you think about why it's growing now. It's not growing now because, you know, we're we're partying or, you know, because we think about party phases. Younger people, as you get older, they don't want to party anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. 
And so as we mature, there's got to be something that's able to keep us together. The thing that we focus on 100% is positive energy. And so this, that's the sustainability in it. It's everything that comes around it, we, cre we create and we cultivate as, as men. But the reason why this is going to continue to grow and continue to grow is all around us focusing on the positive energy of who we are. And people want to be involved with that. They want to be a part of that. They want to attend things like that. They want to tell their friends about right. things like that. And say, hey man, did you go to the flash mob? Mm -hmm. They're going to be in you know, such and such place next month. You got to go. You got to register. You got to go and experience it. And those experiences are what are carrying us, moving us forward, because people are now saying, oh, I got to go. I have to experience that to see what it's all about. Yes. Now, wrapping up, we are wrapping up. Yes, ma'am. Um, let's talk about the 18th of December. Each year yes. declared as Black Men's Wear um, so, Flash Mob. Yes. Is that right? So Miami, In, uh, Miami. Miami, Florida. And I really, I really value uh, Oliver Gilbert. Oliver Gilbert is the vice chair of the Miami-Dade County um, Council. Uh, Oliver Gilbert is a brother mm. who used his position to be able to amplify the positive impact that we were having on the world and honor us and recognize us in Miami on our own day. That actually, when we, when we think about what we're trying to do as a platform, that right there is a testament of the work that we're trying to do mm -hmm. to amplify those that are in different positions, to be able to leverage the strengths that we have in positions to say, if no one else is going to do this, it's his responsibility to say, hey, I'm gonna present this to my board because I think that this is something that we should really mm -hmm. get behind and support. And so being able to have that day there, um, not to get away from that day, but here and having the Ghana Tourism Board endorse our, our flash, our crawl flash mob, um, just that because they're realizing the work that we're trying to do within the community and being able to do that and have the support of officials in that just takes it further mm -hmm. and further mm -hmm. and further. So again, Miami was our first proclamation, um, but I, it's not our last. <laughs> right. it's, not. it's definitely not your last. No, last no. words as we wrap up. I What's really the message to the world, the young people in the world who want to make it, who want to be better people yes. and who are looking for opportunities, who really want to be taken seriously. They want a space at the table. They want to contribute to global peace and yes. security. We want to reach out to every part of the world in the northern part of Africa, in the northern part of America, in the northern part of the eastern part of um, wherever yes. they are. What is the message? My message is follow your heart, follow your vision, and stay true to who you are, right? When I say follow your heart, so this was placed in my heart. This was an opportunity for me to say, you know what? Me seeing black men represented in a way that, negative is, that negatively affecting me and seeing my two sons, at this point they were infants, and saying, I wonder how it's going to make them feel when they get older and they see their faces basically in someone else's face, you know, within those uh, 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 news stories. So follow your heart. Then it's like, be consistent, Just remain true to who you are. Like that's very important. This is really who I am. I'm a very positive driven person. Um, use your voice, impact the world. I think when we, when we started and just being a, a, an Instagram page to now, I mean, the fact that we were able to come to Ghana, go to Kumasi, mm. leave Kumasi and go about an hour and a half uh, to the Besiasi area uh, in Ashanti and partner with building a school and partner with the well so that way this village can have running water. All of this stuff that we're doing to impact change, mm. none of that would have, would have been here if I didn't follow my heart, if I didn't you know, stay true to who I was and be consistent within all of that. So that's, that's my message for young, you know, young individuals. You're not too young either. You're, you're never too young to create impact. You're never too young to create change. So go for it. Right. You're never too young to create an impact. You're never too young to create a change. So go for it. And of course, impact the world with your actions. Neandra Broussard, the founder of the Black Men's Wear Flash Mob. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much for talking to Thank us. You. Right, so at this point, I'm going to take you to the main event organized by the Black Men's Wear Flash Mob right here in Accra. So you get to see what we've been talking about. It was a success. 
and we need you to really endorse this movement. This is not only for the black people, this is a movement for young people across the world. So join the movement. My name is Harriet Nati and the show is Diplomatic Affairs and of course this is where I bid you goodbye and I look forward to seeing you same time next week. Bye bye.